Hello and welcome to the next video in my series on wired and wireless networks. Today we're going to be looking at the internet and key technologies that help us use the internet. So really again it's all about the key technologies that we need to make the internet work. So let's have a look at that then. So we know the internet is a global system of linked computer networks. It's the largest wide area network. In fact it's all the wide area networks in the world linked together. And there are lots of different technologies needed to help everything work together. And in today's lesson, we're going to look at three of those specifically. We're going to look at URLs, we're going to look at IP addressing, and we're going to look at DNS. So don't worry if you're not sure what those mean, we will go through them in more detail. Uh, we're also going to look at hosting and the cloud but I decided to put those onto another video, which I'll record a little after this, just to stop this video getting too long. So let's take a look at URLs. So this stands for Uniform Resource Locator, and this is just a unique web address for each website. And that's something that we're familiar with, it's just the address we type into the web browser address bar that takes us to the different websites. So something like www.bbc.co.uk or www.google.com, this is an example of a URL. Again, we've got a kind of more detailed version down here. We've got the full HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com. This is a URL. Different parts of the URL have slightly different meanings, uh, give you different information about the URL, but you don't really need to know that at this level. So as we know, each page on the internet has a different address. It has a different URL, Uniform Resource Locator. IP address. So if you watch some of my other videos on networking, that's something we have discussed before. Each device connected to the internet has its own unique address. This is the IP address. So for example, 76.215.67.190. So every computer on a wide area network, such as the internet, needs an IP address. It is the location of that computer on the network. Without an IP address, devices cannot send or receive information on the internet. So you need to know the IP address of another computer so you can communicate with it, and it needs to know your, your, your IP address so it can send information back to you. Again, this is just the same way that if we are writing a letter to somebody, we need to put their address on the envelope. If we want them to write back to us, we need to provide them with our address so they can do that. It's exactly the same with IP addressing. Whenever you send data across the internet, that data packet, that section of information, will have the address that it's going to, plus the address that it was sent from, and that will be on every data packet. So again, here's a little bit more information about IP addressing. This is, of course, an example of what we call IP version 4 addressing. There's also a newer system called IP version 6, and that was discussed in another video. But again, we've got the idea, if you want to send information, you need to know the address that you're sending it to, so that you can mark all the data packets and the data can be sent. And then they need to know your address so they can send data back to you. So an IP address can be assigned statically or dynamically. What does that mean? Where a static IP address means that the IP address is fixed and doesn't change. So the computer device has an IP address. Every time it logs in, the IP address is the same. However, dynamic IP addressing is the opposite. The IP address is temporary and is reassigned each time a device connects to the internet. So every time you log on to the internet with your tablet or phone or computer, you, have, you are given a different IP address. Usually businesses use static IP addresses, whereas home users usually have a dynamic IP address that is given to them by their internet service provider, the ISP that they pay to connect them to the internet. 
So that makes sense. A business will have a static IP address. That means it's fixed. They always have the same address on the internet. But for a home user, you don't really care about that. Every time you log in, you get a different IP address. After you log off, that IP address can then be given to somebody else. And that just means an internet service provider doesn't need uh, one IP address for each customer. They can just buy one group and share that out between their users and just reassign them every time somebody logs off and somebody else logs on. All right, guys, we've got a problem. Computers use IP addresses. That's how we send and receive data on the internet. We need IP addresses. However, people aren't very good at memorizing long numbers. We use URLs. So for example, www.facebook.com is easier to remember than 31.13.90.36. So imagine every time you wanted to go to facebook.com, you had to type in this number so that your computer can locate the Facebook server on the internet. That's a long number. It's more difficult to remember than just typing in facebook.com. You've also got the issue that facebook.com might change their IP address. In fact, facebook.com actually have several IP addresses that all point towards facebook.com and their server. So imagine you had to keep changing that number regularly, memorizing new numbers. It would be really difficult. It's just easy for us to use a fixed URL, facebook.com. But how does our computer know that www.facebook.com is located at 31.13.90.36? So again, this URL doesn't really tell the computer how to find the Facebook server. It needs to know this number. How does it do that? There isn't a one-to-one -one relationship here. F does not mean three. A does not mean one. It's not a simple system like that. You can't just convert easily from one to the other. We have a special system to do that. And we call this DNS. This stands for Domain Name System, DNS. This is the internet's equivalent of a phone book. It matches all the phone numbers to all the addresses, except using IP addresses and URLs. It contains each to name each to name, sorry, my tongue is getting twisted here, apologies. It contains each domain name, for example, www.google.com, and its matching IP address. So in this image here, it's 74.125.29.10. And is that a one or a seven? Oh, it's a one, there we go. All right, so this information is held on a huge database. There are lots of different domain name system servers, DNS servers, around the world that contain this information. So here is a list of some of them. And you can see there are lots of different the ones in America and Europe and indeed all around the world. So these computers basically hold a giant database that allows you to match the URLs and the IP addresses. So if your computer wants to find out what the IP address for Facebook is, it can contact one of these servers and say, how do I find www.facebook.com? And the DNS server can send back the actual IP address that your computer needs to connect to the Facebook server. So again, let's just go through that again, how DNS works. This is simplified. The more you study it, the more complex this gets. Uh, we're going to look at it at a very simple surface level just now because that's what you need to know for GCSE. But feel free to watch other videos on YouTube that go into a lot more detail on this. So you type the URL into your web browser, google.com, facebook.com, whatever. The browser sends a request to the domain name system server. The domain name system server finds the IP address for the website you want to access. This IP address is sent back to your web browser. Your web browser can now use this IP address to find the server hosting the website and ask for it to send a copy of the web page to your computer. And now you can view the contents, watch the video, whatever it is you wanted to do on that system. 
So again, just look at that again in diagram form. I'm surfing the internet. I want to visit a website. Uh, this is the address here. It goes to the DNS server. The DNS server says, aha, this website? Yeah, this is the IP address here. It's 52.40.57.158. That gets sent back to my computer. My computer can then use this to send data packets to the web server, asking to view their web pages. And once it reaches the web server, they can then send back to me. So again, this is a really complicated system. This is a very simplified version, but this is what you need at GCSE level. All right, let's just kind of go through that very briefly because it is quite a lot of information to take in all at once. The URL is simply the address we type into our web browser. It is the uniform resource locator like http colon slash slash www bbc.co.uk, for example. The IP address contains the location of a computer on the internet. So it's a number, series of numbers separated by periods or possibly an alphanumeric sequence, but that is the address of a computer device on the internet. A domain name system server, a DNS server, allows the URL and the IP address to be matched together so that your computer can look at a URL, get the IP address, and then contact that server on the internet. All right, hopefully that was really informative. Please like, subscribe, unlike, leave a comment, anything you like. Go make a cup of tea if you want. I will see you in the next video.